What's up everybody? My name is Aaron. Uh, been thinking of starting a YouTube channel for a while now and uh, I guess uh, I figured why not. You know, I'm into uh, cars, definitely into cars. I'm into uh, technology, cell phones, computers, things like that. Always buying the newest cell phones. Probably a good possibility that I'll be buying the Pixel 3 tomorrow. Maybe I'll do an unboxing video of that. But uh, right now I wanted to just do a quick video, you know, about my uh, Chevy Camaro ZL1 1LE. I thought it would be a good first video. So I'm sitting in it right now. And uh, this is, uh, I guess I'll just start with uh, the interior and tell you some things that I like about it and things that I don't, which really there aren't many things that I don't like about it. But, uh, yeah, so here's the, uh, here's the interior. I hope you can see. I think it's one of the much nicer interiors out of the, uh, sports cars I've had. I've actually, that's another thing I've had. Uh, GT350, uh, uh, Dodge Challenger Hellcat, and, uh, I'll get more into that later, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I really like the infotainment system. It's really easy to use. It's, uh, it's got a lot of, uh, it's got like 20, you got 20, like 27 different, uh, ambient lights in this car, you know, 27 different colors. You got, uh, you know... I got the yeah, there's Howard Stern, love Howard Stern, got uh, Sirius, got Bluetooth, got all that, Bluetooth has always worked incredibly, everything, you know, everything with this infotainment works really well, and uh, let's see, yeah, alright, I'll show the ambient lighting a little, a little bit later, but uh, yeah, so, let's see, if I had to, uh, talk about some things that I don't like about the car. I'd have to say the only thing that I really don't like about the car is the, uh, it's, you know, the ride is a little rough, but I mean, you know, you kind of know that, you know what you're getting into when you buy a car like this. And, you know, to be honest, the ride is, it's not nearly as bad as it was when I first got it. It had, a. um, Goodyear Eagle F1s, it was an absolute nightmare, honestly, like, I literally thought about, you know, bringing the car back and, you know, trading it in for something else, the, the, it was so harsh, but I believe, you know, from what I understand, the reason for that is because those were run flats and, you know, that the very hard sidewall, those tires not recommended anyway, you know, unless you're really tracking the car, which I've had it for about six months, never tracked it, I'd like to, but... You know, we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, those tires are not good for, you know, for everyday driving. First of all, if you're in anything other than perfect weather, they're going to, you're going to slide. I bought the car in the winter and it was probably like 30 degrees out. And, uh, yeah, you know, just, uh, you know, taking it home, I just, you know, driving out of the parking lot, I was fishtailing, you know, just driving regularly, I wasn't, you know, trying to go crazy or anything, and yeah, I was about an hour away from my house, so it was a pretty interesting ride, I was driving on the highway with my hazards on, yeah, going about 40 miles an hour, so that was, that was interesting, but uh, honestly, other than that, Really nothing that I can say that I don't like. I mean, you know, people complain about visibility, which, I mean, I don't know. I really don't think it's that, <laughs> that bad. I guess, I don't know, looking around, it's kind of bad. But, you know, you, you get used to it, you know. You definitely get used to it. It's, uh, you know, it's got blind spot detection. And I'm taller, so I think that definitely helps. But, uh... I had a friend of mine drive it, and he said that the visibility was absolutely terrible, but he was a lot shorter, so, you know, he was saying that he couldn't see over the hood and things like that. But uh, one thing I would highly suggest if you buy this car is get, yeah, there's somebody walking. You just get, uh, get these blind spot mirrors. They help a ton right here. 
these they definitely help a ton and then you know obviously this car comes with blind spot monitoring so that's good another thing that you know makes the visibility not that great is that these doors you know they come up really high you know you can barely like you know you can't even sit with your arm out or you with your arm you know like on the window like that because it's so high but uh other than that i you know i really like it i like the uh the uh you know gauge clusters you got your boost you know monitor and all that you know the uh, the shift the, i'll tell you one thing I, I love these see right here this is uh you turn this to get you know to adjust the temperature in the car absolutely awesome everybody loves that everybody that i show really loves that i think the interior of this car like i said is night and day you know leaps and bounds ahead of the hellcat and the uh you know gt350 yeah ac uh you know ac and uh ac and heat work really good it's got heated and cooled seats it's got a heated steering wheel it's, yeah, it's, uh, obviously, you know, it's got a tiny, you know, tiny back seat back there. But, you know, I mean, anybody buying this car knows that the back seat room isn't, isn't going to be the greatest. Let's take a look, see what we can... Yeah, so you got, you know, really no room back there at all. So... Other than that though, uh, driving impressions, I'll do a driving, you know, video with this car, but I, uh, I can't at the moment because I kind of, you know, just, this was like a last minute thing. I decided to, you know, go out and buy all the equipment last night and for the, you know, YouTube channel and they didn't have a, a like a window mounting, uh, camera holder. So, you know, I tried to make a video driving and it's just the cameras going everywhere so i'm gonna have to think of something you know buy something and make another video but like i said i'll be making a lot of videos and uh you know the but the driving impressions you know this thing is an absolute monster it sounds it sounds amazing you know i wish it was you know i wish you could hear it a little bit more inside but it sounds amazing. You get pops and crackles and everything else. The transmission is absolutely one of the best that I've ever used. It's, uh, from what I understand, it's the uh, Tremec TR6060, which is a similar version to what I had in the GT350, which was also a very good transmission. The, uh, if I had a complaint about it, I'd say that it, you know, it, the clutch was very light. Honestly, you'd have to wear really light shoes or you couldn't even feel it, which I did not like. This car has rev matching, which is incredible. You know, for somebody that's not a heel-toe driver, which I'm not, I absolutely love that. The gears are, you know, like it goes right into gear every time. Clutch is, the, I think, the perfect height. I mean, uh, the perfect weight. Absolutely, you know, incredible. Not too heavy, not too light. The Hellcat I had, you know, that the clutch was extremely heavy in that. It was definitely the heaviest clutch I ever, ever used. And uh, I didn't really care for the transmission in that car. Yeah, because, you know, like, first of all, I, you know, I did buy the car used, but, you know, just right off the showroom floor, it was, uh, you know, like it squeaked when you would engage the clutch and, you know, you'd hear rattles when you'd close the door and things like that. It really wasn't, honestly, it wasn't built the best. I mean, I don't know if a brand new one would be any different, but, you know, to be honest, that's kind of what I've heard. Dodge, you know, their stuff isn't the highest of quality. This car and the GT350 were both leaps and bounds ahead of that one in terms of build quality and all that. To be honest, this is by far my favorite car out of all the three that I had, with the GT350 being the least favorite. The only reason that I say that is because honestly, like, I mean, you know, the GT, the Hellcat and the Camaro both have 650 torque. You know, the Hellcat had 707 horsepower. This has 650. Honestly, you know, going to a car that has 526 and four, I believe it was 429 torque, big difference. It, like, to be honest, you know, it almost felt like going into a, like a Honda Civic or something, you know, when it, you know, comparing it to this thing. And then, you know, not to mention all the torque was, you know, like, above 4,000 RPM, below that, it was pretty dead, 
I, I mean, people love that car, you know, no offense. I, you know, I know it's a good car. Just really wasn't what I was looking for. The Hellcat, you know, that was very, that was a, that was a fun car. I loved that. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of ran into some problems with that. I actually got it modded. You know, I, I got up to a thousand horsepower and uh, I ran into a lot of problems. I, uh, I did Cook's headers, long tube, long tube headers. I did a tune. I did, uh, you know, pulley swap, meth injection, all this. It was, it was fun. You know, it was really fun. But, you know, it only lasted for about a month before the whole thing just seemed to fall apart. I had uh, check engine light cylinder misfires. The, uh, you know, the place that I got the work done, they were good. You know, they they did their best to help me with it but you know they said that there really wasn't anything else they could do other than tearing the engine apart and you know I don't know I was kind of getting sick of it and you know I feel maybe I should have stuck with it a little bit more but I ended up selling it and uh you know to be honest though I'm not really blaming the the company that did the work because it was used like I said and when I bought it it did have drag radials on it so oh yeah and another thing the uh the pulley had you know previous pry marks this is all stuff that you know like I, when I bought it I was new to the whole you know car game modding game and all that so you know these are things that I really didn't know to look for until later on so you know, if you're wondering why the hell I would have bought a car like that, you know, that's, I really didn't know any better. So, but anyway, I ended up getting rid of that, and then I got the GT350. The only reason I haven't got the GT350 is because I, uh, I also own a Raptor, which, you know, I could do a review on that too. But, uh, I also own a Raptor, and I, you know, I've kind of been, you know, a big Ford fan, for a while so I thought maybe I'd stick with just Ford but I don't know I really didn't like that car uh, I don't know the biggest thing that I could tell anybody watching this video or maybe anybody that's thinking of buying a new car you know don't be brand loyal you know always go out and check you know check all the different cars and you know what I mean because honestly you're missing out on a lot just being loyal to one brand and blindly buying because I am so glad that I've checked this thing out because it's by far the best car I've ever had. But yeah, like I was saying, you know, this thing, the power, this thing actually, though it has a less of a power rating than the Hellcat, stock for stock, this thing actually feels faster because it's lighter for one thing. And second of all, like the engine is so much better that it's got that low end torque where you know the hellcat believe it or not i was actually kind of surprised it seemed to be a little bit lacking down low where this thing like it's got torque anywhere and another yeah i mean if you look it up the uh I believe the Hellcat's peak torque rating is about like 5,000 RPM, where this thing is like third in the 3,000s. Don't quote me, but I'm just going off memory here. But yeah, honestly, this engine is a lot, seems a lot better. And that's what I've been told. A lot of people have told me that, you know, Hellcat, that Hemi engine, you know, those things aren't really all that reliable. A lot of people say that if there was ever a car I should have modded, it probably should have been this one because these LT4s are pretty tough. But uh, other than that, you know, gas mileage, to be honest, has been pretty similar throughout all of them. I've averaged about 15, 16 miles to the gallon. I don't really, you know, I don't drive them too crazy because, uh, you know, I'm not trying not to get any tickets. You know, I don't, my license uh, isn't, it's not in the best. Uh, I've had some, you know, problems when I was younger, but, uh, you know, I'm, you know, doing much better now, and I'm trying to keep it that way. I don't want the insurance to go through the roof or anything, but, uh, seats are extremely comfortable. Uh, you know, this and the Hellcat definitely had the best seats. The, the GT350 seats, they were comfortable, you know, they were good, but they were very small. You know, I'm 6'4", I weigh about 225 pounds, and, yeah, the seats were a little tight to me. You know, so uh, just that's another thing to keep in mind for anybody. I would definitely consider that car to be somebody for with, you know, a smaller body type. And uh, I did put, uh, you know, the only mods that I have on this thing are 
I've got tinted windows and I've got a Corsa exhaust. I've thought about modding it, but I don't think that I'm gonna because I, you know, I don't want to void the warranty. I don't want, I don't want to mess with the reliability. I've got about 6,000 miles on this thing. It's been rock solid. You know, I really don't, I don't know. I don't want to change that. And to be honest, it's pretty damn powerful. It's, it's, it's pretty much, you know, it's powerful enough, you know, so I don't really think I should, I don't know. I don't know if I should really mess with the making it more powerful so that's another thing you know with the, when you start with the modding game another thing that i've noticed i don't know if anybody if anybody else here you know f feels the same but you know like you, you mod it you add more power but then you kind of get used to it so it's, you know what i mean then you're always wanting more and it just becomes a vicious cycle and another thing i couldn't stand like with the hellcat you know, the downtime on that thing was, you know, getting the work done, it took about three weeks, and then, you know, with all the problems, it was down for months, like, it was at the point where it was in the shop longer than, you know, more than it was at home, so, you know, I really don't want to go through that again, that's brutal, anybody that mods their cars, you know, they'll, they'll tell you how bad the downtime can be. I've only done one oil change on it so far. I did the thousand mile break in, you know, oil change, and then uh, I'm scheduled to do another one pretty soon. I'm going to wait till it's got 6,000 miles. It's pretty much got every option. Uh, the only thing that it doesn't have that I was actually pretty upset about, I didn't even realize this till after, you know, later on, but it doesn't have the PDR, the, you know, personal data recorder where you can, you know, record your laps and, you know, all that. That definitely would have been pretty cool, but, you know, I don't know, it doesn't have it. One thing that I also really like about this thing is the uh, heads-up display it's got. You know, it's got the Bose uh, premium audio system, which I absolutely love. It's one of the better systems that I've heard in a car. It's, uh, you know, I have the Sony audio system in my Raptor. I think this one sounds a little better. It's a little more, a little more refined. It's, it seems to be, the Sony one can kind of be a little piercing at times, but. Oh yeah, one, another thing that's cool about this car is it's got, uh, it's got wireless charging, which is, you know, that's a nice, it's a nice little touch. The only problem is, you know, with the phones these days, the problem is with the phones these days being the size that they are, I haven't found one phone that'll actually fit in there and charge, so that's not so good. I guess that's really all I can think of right now. Uh, if anybody, like I said, you know, this is my first video, so kind of just going, you know, like off the uh, cuff here. So forgive me if I forgot to mention anything. But, uh, you know, if you guys have any questions, you can definitely, you know, leave them in the comments. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll do a walk around, you know, of the car so you can see it. And, uh, you know, I'll let you listen to the exhaust, and, uh... Alright, so this is the, uh, outside of the, uh, 2018 Camaro CL1 Wiley. Got the windows tinted, it's the, uh, blue. Got the, uh, Michelin. These are the tires that I've got. Yep, right there. Amazing brakes, by the way. See the arrow and all that. Let's see the wing, the tinted tail lights, which come stock. Try the uh, course of exhaust I've got on there. Duh. everything as you can see this thing has a incredible road presence I've uh, out of all the cars I've owned this is definitely the one that gets the most the most attention I get people all the time asking me what the hell is that thing and 
people see it, they don't even know what it is. So I'll uh, do a little start up. Like I said, amazing car, absolutely love this car, handling is absolutely incredible, and uh, that was the one thing I didn't really care for about the Hellcat was the fact that, you know, it had the power, but it really didn't have the handling, and, you know, okay, so I go to school in Norwalk, I go, uh, I, well, I, I did go to school in Norwalk, uh, what do you call it, I wanted, you know, the Merritt Parkway, and there, you know, it's a windy, windy highway and like there were uh roads on there that you know in the hellcat i'd i'd you know i'd take it you know i'd have to slow down with this thing like i could i could be going like 90 and i'm thinking damn honestly this thing could take a lot more not to really not to turn this thing into a comparison video but you know i've had a lot of cars so obviously i'm gonna you know i'm gonna be comparing but like I said, like honestly, this one is by far the best. Anybody thinking about getting a Camaro, this thing is absolutely incredible. Absolutely love it. Really not not a bad thing to say about it, honestly. So uh yeah, and like I said, uh, I've also got I've also got a 17 Raptor that I absolutely love and uh uh, you know, look, be on the lookout for a review video of that, and I'll probably get into, like, cell phone reviews. I'm a huge Android guy, and, uh, alright, thank you for watching. And just, uh, one more thing, I'd like to, uh, shout out, uh, somebody, Tall Guy Car Reviews. Absolutely love your videos. You're the one that inspired me to, uh, start making videos. Hopefully someday we'll collab, and I'll, um, you know, my Camaro will beat your Hellcat, and, you know, that'll be that. But, uh, no, all jokes aside, uh, love your channel. Keep doing what you're doing, and, uh, all right, well, uh, thank you everybody for watching, and have a great day. Please subscribe. Many more videos to come. Bye.